we are with Representative Strom Peterson from the 21st District. So this is week four. I wanted to ask you a couple of things. So let's start on a sour note and end on a good note. The first thing I want to ask you is about solitary confinement. I don't know that people actually understand what that means and what that does to the human psyche. So can you tell us about that and what your bill does? Sure, thank you. And that's really the core of this bill. So House Bill 1756 is really asking the Department of Corrections to pretty much ban solitary confinement in our prisons. People have to be isolated for certain reasons, and that's allowed in the bill. But imagine what we've all been going through with isolation over the last two years, and magnify that by, I don't know, a 1,000 or 10,000. If you had to sit in a 10 by 10 concrete cell for 23 hours a day, every day, 23 hours a day, those gray walls surrounding you, maybe you've got a radio, maybe you have a couple of books, but the human interaction is just not there other than maybe a guard peering through a peephole into your living quarters. This is what people here in Washington state have been dealing with for years and around the country. So my bill really is trying to put an end to that. That doesn't do anybody any good to be locked in a cell for that long. It's, of course, incredibly bad on the mental health and physical health of the incarcerated individual, but it also creates a system of anger and animosity and violence. When these folks finally do get out of solitary confinement, they're not doing well. So they get into fights, that violence just explodes into even more violence, and the cycle starts all over. So this bill is going to really get those folks that some of them need to be isolated, but we need to make sure they're getting the mental health support that they need so they can get out of isolation and they can reenter society. You know, about 98% of the people that are currently incarcerated are going to be released back into our communities. We want them healthy. We want them productive. That's the aspiration of this bill. And I've been really proud to work with Department of Corrections on this bill. They're making great strides, but we need to take it just a little step further. And then my next question on a much better note is about feeding kids. How do we feed kids? What's going on? Right. We have a lot of great bills on feeding kids. And we've done a lot of great work in the past. We passed breakfast after the bell a number of years ago with Representative Stonier. I was able to pass a lunch shaming bill a couple of years after that. There's a group of us in the house, we call ourselves the food fighters, but the work continues. You know, we still have hungry kids and we know hungry kids can't learn. If you go to school and you have an empty belly, you just can't concentrate. You're not going to be able to learn math. You're not going to be able to learn the things that our teachers are working so hard to try to teach you so you can be successful. So this bill is going to expand community eligibility programs. That sounds pretty boring, but it's an opportunity to get federal money to help feed kids, hungry kids. And there are a lot of schools that are eligible for this program that aren't taking advantage of it. So if we get all of the schools to take advantage of this program, Right now, we could feed an extra 92,000 kids here in the state of Washington. Yeah, it's a big number, but it's a number that's hugely important. If we can feed these kids, they're going to be better learners. They're going to be happier and healthier. All of those things that comes with a good hot meal or a breakfast at school. So super proud to support Representative Marcus Riccelli and so many of the other food fighters to make sure we get this bill across the line. All right. And lastly, tell us what's happening right now. This is a short session. There are some deadlines that are about to happen or are happening right now. What's going on? Right. So as you and I are talking, we're in the middle of cutoff week, which means that all of the policy bills have to be finished in their house of origin. Basically, any policy bill in the House has to pass through committee. Any policy bill in the Senate has to pass through committee. So I've got one more meeting in the Housing and Human Services and Veterans Committee. We have about five more bills we still need to make sure that we get agreement on and that we can get out. I think that's going to happen, but Thursday is going to be a stressful day. Somebody said that short session is kind of like long session only in dog years. So every day seems like about a week. We're in week four, but it feels like we're in a lot deeper than that. But it's been great. We're getting a lot of work done.